Hey there, Central Ohio. I'm Tim Weather Impact Meteorologist Michael Barron's here with today's Weather Impact Show. We started off things today kind of on a gloomy note, and it hasn't really changed much as we headed into the afternoon. This was a view from this morning when we had a 10 TV weather impact alert day in place for a couple hours for some dense fog across the region. This was a view showing uh, what some of the interstates look like around the region at kind of the peak of that fog. It wasn't impossible to see, but you can see visibility cut down under a mile at a lot of times this morning necessitated some slow travel on the roads, but thankfully that fog is pretty much burned off, but we are still seeing a little bit of low visibility as we head into the afternoon. I'll show you your weather impact headlines as we head into the next couple of days. Rain is moving in as we work our way through the rest of the day today. Nicer weather though, not far away. That'll be here as we head into the weekend. We've just got to deal with some of those rain showers here on this Friday before we can get on to that nicer weather for Saturday and for Sunday. That's good news out there. If you're a Buckeyes fan, if you're going to the game this weekend, you shouldn't have to worry about rainfall being a problem. It will be back to sunshine by then. Right now, looking toward downtown, about as bright as we've seen it all day. We're seeing a little bit of light sprinkle activity, still some of that residual fog from this morning hanging around. But overall, the bulk of the rain not yet here. Cloudy skies and 48 outside in Columbus. A little wind chill, feels like 46, but not bad out there for this time of the year. Just kind of cloudy, kind of gloomy. It's going to get progressively rainier, though, as we work our way through the rest of the day today and into tonight. Temperatures out there may still add another degree or two this afternoon. We're expected to get up near 50 here in Columbus. Already in the 50s to the south, Circleville, Lancaster, Chillicothe, down to Piketon and Athens, all in the low 50s. Again, that's about where we'll top out this afternoon here in Columbus as well, kind of around that 50, 51 degree mark with rain shower activity starting to take over as we head through the evening commute. Those rain showers will continue you through the rest of tonight and into the start of the day tomorrow. But again, that should be good news out there for the Buckeyes fans that rain working its way out as we head into the midday tomorrow. We should be looking at dry weather for kickoff over at the shoe. Speaking of kickoff, we've still got some high school teams playing here in the postseason. First and 10 forecast for tonight. We gave you 13 weeks of great football weather. It was bound to be rainy one of these days and that day is tonight. Look for a kickoff temperature hanging around that 50 degree mark still upper 40s will stay in the 40s through the game thanks to the cloud cover and the rainfall that'll be in place out there, but you're going to need the rain gear out there tonight. We're not talking downpours and total like rain out type weather, but just nuisance rain that's going to continue light scattered showers. You'll need the umbrella raincoat and probably something to stay warm because it's not all that cold, but if you're wet out there in the 40s, Definitely not going to be comfortable. Good news though. Here's the trend as we head toward the weekend. We get rid of the rain chances after tonight. We're back to dry weather by tomorrow and we stay dry all the way through Monday. Now here's the bad news. Rain chances come back back to the forecast by next Tuesday. And this is important because Tuesday, one of those busy travel days ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday, and that's looking to be fairly rainy here across central Ohio. But the good news is we do push back to dry weather by Thanksgiving. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on that forecast as we head toward next week. Here's a look at your 10 weather impact live radar right now. We're seeing light scattered showers across central Ohio. Again, not all of this reaching the ground, but a little bit of sprinkle activity here in Franklin County, certainly not to be ruled out the same as you get up toward Marysville, Urbana over toward London, seeing a little bit of that light rainfall. The bulk of this, though, the real heart of the moisture still back out toward the south and west. You can see that pushing through Indiana this hour, stretching back up into Illinois and down into Kentucky and West Virginia. That will push here eventually with rain chances continuing to increase as we head throughout the afternoon. We'll break down the rest of the forecast here for you. Looks like this. Those showers continue to increase increase in number as we head through the afternoon. This is about five o'clock for that evening commute. We're seeing a good amount of scattered showers across central Ohio by that point. These continue into the evening. Of course, those high school games kicking off about seven o'clock. They're dealing with really the same thing that we're dealing with now, which are will be dealing with during that 5 p.m. hour is the scattered showers, light rain. 
somewhere embedded in there may get a little bit of a more moderate shower. That's a possibility. You see those little bits of yellow popping up south of I-70. Can't totally rule that out, but overall, this shouldn't be any kind of thunderstorm event. Uh, it's not been warm enough for that. This is just mostly going to be rain across the region this evening. Heading toward midnight, rain shower chances. They continue across central Ohio and even past midnight, still dealing with scattered showers. Some of those a little bit more toward the moderate side from time to time, but that would be kind of the last uh, gasp of the system because as we get close to sunrise tomorrow, that's when we've pushed the rain out. All that rain now off toward the east. We're still dealing with cloud cover at sunrise Saturday. If you're out there tailgating early, keep that in mind. But as we work our way closer to kickoff, that noon kickoff, these clouds will be pushing their way out of central Ohio. And you can see we're almost done with it here in Columbus by that noon point. We've pushed the cloud cover out throughout the afternoon, and we wrap up your Saturday on a pretty sunny note and a pretty nice note heading into the uh, back half of the weekend as well. Here's your 10 weather impact seven day forecast scattered showers coming through here this afternoon. Those will wrap up early tomorrow. Not expected to impact the Buckeye forecast at all. We're talking about clearing skies through the game time hours tomorrow. Temperatures will make their way up into the low 50s for highs. Most of the cloud cover is going to be around during the tailgate tomorrow morning for that noon kick. After that, we stay comfortable Sunday mid 50s above average for this time of the year. Same for Monday, but then Tuesday brings our next chance for rain. Our temperature jumps to 60, but then, well, it's kind of a crummy looking day. Look at this rainfall by 10 a.m. covering most of the region. Scattered showers expected to continue through the afternoon and evening, but the good news is this does push out of here by Wednesday. And we are back to dry weather for Thanksgiving, but look at the temperature. We really go down as we head toward next week. Temperature falling from 60 on Tuesday, 50 on Wednesday, and down to a chilly 37 on Thursday. It's really going to start to feel like the changing seasons here as we head into uh, that Thanksgiving holiday. So I hope you've got uh, plans to be inside with plenty of warm food because it's going to be a day to uh, put the TV on, watch some football and stay cuddled or uh, warmed up inside, huddled up inside. That's the word I'm looking for because that temperature is going to be chilly out there for the holiday. Of course, though, we are here on a Friday and the end of the week does mean Time to talk about sports heading into the weekend and the high school football season. Like we said, it's not over yet. The regional final playoffs for high school football are tonight. You're looking right now at highlights from some of the last week's games. Some of the matchups we're watching tonight include Bishop Watterson against Steubenville, Big Walnut against Massillian Washington, and Olentangy Orange against Pickerington Central. Teams will play at neutral sites tonight. Games kick off at 7 o'clock. You can find a full list of the games right now on 10tv.com. And of course, the weekend also means Ohio State football, and it's just one more day until another kickoff at the shoe, really less than a day now. The Ohio State Buckeyes are looking to go 11 and 0 against Rutgers tomorrow. But if you talk to head coach Ryan Day, the Buckeyes will act like the team hasn't won anything at all. Whether it's good noise, bad noise, it just has nothing to do with each guy focusing on doing their job on a daily basis. That's what it comes down to, nothing else. And so you know, everyone's got to understand what that is. And, you know, we're all being evaluated. We know that. We know how important this is. And we have an obligation to make sure that we're doing our part um, because, you know, it matters so much. And you can watch more of that exclusive sound with Coach Day tomorrow morning on Game Time with Ryan Day, the official coaches show of the Ohio State Buckeyes. It airs at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Kickoff again against Rutgers is at noon. And moving outside the sports world for the upcoming weekend tonight, Wildlights is back at the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium, and leaders are making sure you're not going to get stuck heading home. Zoo officials say they've added more parking staff and are working with local police in ODOT to make sure traffic flows smoothly. Just last year, this was the scene when the parking lot was gridlocked. Now officials say they've learned from last year's experience and are ready to take on the big number of families heading out this year. Yeah, we definitely had some issues last year, but in the mid-season, we did correct those and make, make the adjustments with local authorities, as well as our internal teams put together a plan, and we're continuously looking at that plan and revising it. We've been coming here since we were in college, and when we had kids, we knew 
No, we definitely had to come. The lights, they were really cool, and the lasers were really cool. I'm thankful that I'm here right now. That's video from last night's preview for members only. Wild Lights officially starts tonight and runs through January 4th. And if you're looking for some more fun things to do this weekend, we've got you covered. Jay Plyburn has a quick overview of some of the things happening in Columbus over the next few days. For the book lovers out there, don't miss Love, Magic, and Myth, celebrating the release of three new novels. All three authors will be on hand for a panel discussion, Q&A, and book signing. The event is happening at Storyline Bookshop in Upper Arlington from 6 to 8 Friday night. Just make sure you reserve your free ticket ahead of time. If you feel like moving your body this weekend, check out the Abundance Day Raves Open House this Saturday. The family-friendly dance party offers an opportunity to connect, play, express yourself, and even create art. It runs from 11 to 1 at ZCT House in the Short North. The event is free, but you're encouraged to RSVP. Couldn't be happier. And finally, be one of the first to see Wicked for Good. The movie hits theaters this weekend with a watch party happening Saturday night, hosted by Nationwide Children's Hospital Pediatric Residency. It's happening at the Cinemark Stone Ridge Plaza. The movie starts at 7 p.m. and you will have to buy your own ticket. We're talking about it in the forecast. We are less than a week away from the Thanksgiving holiday, and you might be, you know, packing those bags as we speak. As you get ready for that holiday, though, you should know AAA says this Thanksgiving will be one of the busiest yet, with nearly 82 million people expected to travel at least 50 miles from home. Airlines are back to normal following disruptions caused by the government shutdown, but TSA is still working to ramp up to full staffing levels at some airports. Travelers say they're prepared. I get here to the airport about two to three hours early because you just never know. <laughs> It seems like a lot of people are heading down to the Sunshine State for the holiday. AAA says Orlando is the top domestic destination this holiday. And if you're one of those people planning to hit the road, we do have a safety checklist for you before you head out the door. The Ohio Department of Transportation says the busiest time to travel will be on Tuesday from 3 to 7. Keep in mind our forecast. We did say that was going to be fairly rainy, so add that to your plans if you're traveling that day. The Ohio State Highway Patrol, they will have extra crews on the road to help with safety. They say the best way to beat the rush is to leave early. Also, if you're traveling through a construction zone, remember to slow down and move over. Of course, the holiday travel season is also a sign that flu season is moving in, and this year could be worse than the last. Nick Oldhoff from South Bend affiliate WSBT reports. Flu season across the United States is expected to affect many people, and new variants could cause that number to rise than years prior. Local experts tell me that you should not wait to get your flu shot this season. In St. Joseph County, we lost 80 people to flu deaths uh, during last year's season. This year alone, there were uh, at the end of the season, we lost 24 people uh, from deaths of flu. As families come together next week for Thanksgiving, health departments want you to be vaccinated from the flu. According to the Indiana Department of Health, symptoms like fever, chills, cough, sore throat, and more can be signs of the flu. These symptoms can even begin days later after being exposed and could even last up to seven days. There's a misnomer that people say, um, I got the flu after I got the flu shot. And, and that's possible. That means that maybe they were exposed to influenza um, before the shot had the vaccine had a chance to fully kick in. The Centers for Disease Control, or CDC, recommends yearly flu shots for children, pregnant women, and adults. Last September, the FDA also approved the flu mist, which sprays into the nose for ages 2 through 49 who meet certain criteria. According to the CDC, the number of vaccines distributed to patients have dropped since 2020. Back during the COVID-19 pandemic, nearly 194 million doses of influenza vaccines were distributed in the U.S. Today, that number has dropped to nearly 148 million doses distributed. The St. Joseph Health System is also reminding patients during this flu season to cover your mouth when you sneeze and wear a mask if you're sick and have to travel in public. If sick, try to stay home and visit a doctor if you develop flu symptoms. 
The CDC expects a moderate flu season that typically begins in October and lasts until May. Peak months are December through February, just when potential new variants could be on the rise. And they're finding that the main variant that uh, is uh, out and about is the H3N2 variant. Uh, that's a type of um, strain that tends to cause more severe illness. Officials say if patients haven't received their flu shot yet this season, now is the time. In St. Joseph County, I'm Nick Oudhoff, WSBT 22 News. And thanks, Nick, for that report. The cold season isn't all flu and travel troubles, though. Ski resorts are also getting ready for the coming winter weather. But what do they do when, well, the weather itself doesn't cooperate? Increasingly, resorts are turning to a new class of expert whose full-time job is figuring out the art and science of snowmaking. Connor McGill spoke to one of those new experts. Well, they might as well call you Mr. Snow with your knowledge. <laughs> I don't know if I get that far, but I, I certainly love it. Meet Brendan Ryan, a principal at Alpine Solutions. He's one of the experts ski resorts turn to as they try to adapt their snowmaking plans to a changing climate. For him, this all started early. At one point, our neighbors came over and said, why is that boy outside in the snow? And they couldn't get me inside. When I had an opportunity to you know, dig into a little bit deeper and, uh, and ultimately turn it into a career, I, I didn't, didn't stop. And now that lifelong passion has turned into a national job, helping ski resorts from around the country figure out how to make snow when the weather doesn't always cooperate. With climate change going on, you know, snowmaking is becoming more and more important every year. And that's why Sugar Bowl is thinking years ahead. Currently, we actually are under a master plan uh, project for our snowmaking system, which we want to expand. Because even with some help from Mother Nature, snowmaking is still a science. A lot of science. There, there is a lot of science behind it, yeah. Uh, it's not just flipping on the guns and going. Um, just for example, right now when it's snowing, generally we can't make snow because it's too humid to do it. And as temperatures and humidity swing more widely year to year, Experts like Ryan have to customize plans for every mountain. Every resort's different. Uh, you know, my, I, I live in Conway, New Hampshire, and uh, it's quite a bit different operating out there than it is, uh, say, at Sugar Bowl. But uh, it's exciting and it's amazing. At the end of the day, um, we're all trying to create an amazing skiing experience You know, by using air and water to make, um, make snow. And finally today, let's check out some new video into us here at 10 TV. First up and sticking with the snow theme, children, animals, everyone really enjoyed playing in the snow this past Thursday as a cold snap brought frosty conditions to parts of the UK and the country's meteorological office had to issue weather warnings related to the snow. Deer, though, they frolicked through the fields in northern England, children, they were sledding down snowtop hills in the south of the country and over in northern Ireland, ducks sheltered under a trampoline in a wintry garden. The UK's Met Office issued a new class of alert, a yellow warning for snow and ice for parts of England and Scotland as this system came through on Thursday. But as you can see there from those kids sliding down the hill, it was certainly more fun than anything else. Always good to get out and enjoy the snow. And finally today, a different type of storm was hitting parts of Texas earlier this week. Time lapse video showing a haboob rolling to through Wolfirth, Texas. These are massive dust storms that are created when winds blow across the dry land and whip up these huge clouds of dust that just sort of engulf everything as they move in. These types of storms can travel for miles and miles and this video taken Thursday really just kind of represents how impressive these kinds of storms are as they sort of cover the whole horizon there and eventually engulf you where you're standing. There's not really much you can do about it. You just kind of got to hunker down until those storms push through. You can see how quickly it goes from blue skies to dark clouds and that dust. These can typically happen in front of either big weather systems, wind storms, or even in front of certain thunderstorm systems. Either way, though, creates an impressive video uh, when those haboob type storms push through. Of course, though, no haboobs in our future here in central Ohio, but it doesn't mean we're not tracking the weather here at 10 TV. Coming up later tonight, Chief Meteorologist Jerry Martz, he'll be back with a closer look at the rain as it moves through and your forecast for the weekend. Until then, you can catch more news and weather online at 10TV.com. 
Have a great afternoon.